Hey everybody, it's TRG. We're back after a very long time, but we have done a couple vlogs. Welcome back. Uh, we are gonna talk about 13 Reasons Why season two today. Um, so if you haven't seen it, it's gonna be a spoiler alert for some shit. I mean, we're gonna re reveal stuff. So we'll talk about a couple of things that we liked, disliked, our biggest, most pissed off moments, our good moments, our sad moments. So, with that being said, we'll go straight into episode one. Um, everybody gets the information that they are proceeding with the trial since they, um, some of the kids are being subpoenaed into court. Um, so, as they proceed to trial, Tyler was the first to go in. The photo kid, the one that snooped through the window taking pictures, the one that does the yearbook. Um, so he went up and he told pretty much the truth and he saw he said exactly what he saw and things that you know even you know clay didn't know um then um after that then after that he started to have problems with other students um that we'll get into in later episodes um they put the photo in the locker of clay but like you got to remember that um in this season there's so much more revealed like you only hear hannah's part in season one in season two you hear everybody else's part there's always two sides to every story and there's so much revealing in this one so many so many secrets that hannah hid from from everybody that like even when tyler was when he did sneak in, in to take the picture in season one of Hannah, they go back to that, but then they didn't. They revealed that she was actually unbuttoning her shirt because mm. she was sexting. From what the observation of through Tyler. So when he was taking a picture of Hannah, like he didn't do it intentionally. He wanted to give Hannah the pictures that he took from the photo shoot that they had done, which was not even talked about in uh, season one, that, you know, Tyler went up to her and asked her if he wanted a photo shoot, and she said, yeah. Her mom criticized her a bit, and then her mom realized that, you know, she maybe some of the things that she said to her daughter could have, you know, affected why she d took her life, but when Tyler took that picture outside the window and they're calling him a pervert and shit, like... He, she was actually taking off her like unbuttoning her shirt from like when she worked at the movies like and took a picture like if she was showing her cleavage it wasn't like serious it's like come on like every bitch does it like come on so like it just made her look bad it was pretty shocking to everybody including like, clay like clay got really upset yeah he let he got he got so upset that he left the courtroom um uh, but yeah uh, later when clay went back to school he like i said he got a photo on the locker and the on the back on the back of the photo it said that's the um, first pro Polaroid, right? Yeah, it's the first Polaroid, and it says it's not the only one. And it's an older photo. Like, the people, you know, you could tell, like, the people were not from, you know, their class. It was from a class way, way long, long ago. So you could tell that there was a little bit of... And it said um, on the back of it in duct tape, in blue marker, it said Hannah wasn't the only one. Yeah. So, obviously, the school has had previous cases where um, similar stuff that Hannah went through, um, other females have went through, and somebody's trying to hint to Clay that, which will eventually tell you who that is later on in the podcast. That's what I'm saying. If you don't have time to watch it, if you've seen it, this is the podcast to listen to about it. But if you want to watch it and don't want a spoiler alert, don't listen to this. Okay, so on to episode two. Um, Courtney takes a stand, yeah. and that is the girl that Hannah kissed. Um, and then they made it like they made that photo like go all over the fucking school, just like the one in the with her panties showing with Justin on the playground. So Courtney takes a stand, and she tells the truth too. She reveals how during that evening, um, Hannah was actually the good friend. They started to make it seem like Hannah was the one initiating the you know the kiss and everything but it was revealed that Courtney was actually into it and you know she kind of made a remark after the kiss like oh it was a meaningless kiss and it was actually Courtney's first kiss and, and it was meaningful to her it was meaningful to her because yeah. she had a crush on Hannah so she eventually comes out in court yeah they pretty much made her come out and say that she was 
into Hannah at that sleepover and and and, and Hannah gave it to her as a good friend. She kissed her back and they had pictures of why would Hannah kiss you back? Is Hannah a lesbian? Was she bisexual? And Courtney was feeling all this pressure and it, she she just had to come out and say it. She had to come out and say Hannah's not the one that's that's you know a lesbian it's me you know and yeah her parents were a shock but they shouldn't be too shocked because her parents are both um two males yeah. so you know and she did cry about it to them and she's like they're like oh they're you know gay parents are always going to be understanding especially if your kid is gay because you know you can't be hypocrite like what the hell but um yeah she did come out and she did tell the truth and um clay is also seeing sky Mm -hmm. um the girl with the tattoos you know they dated back in seventh grade i guess and then um as this is going on everybody's getting threatened tyler got threatened with the note in his locker um i don't think courtney got threatened maybe she did or um the polaroids are separate from the person that's threatening but Clay, I want to go back to Sky. Clay's girlfriend, Sky, at the you know at this moment, is starting to get annoyed because he won't have sex with her. He continues to see Hannah as he's you know undressing Sky. He sees Hannah and he freaks out and like you know he they continue to have like that kind of problem. So that in turn leads to. Yeah, it leads to her, like, making her, it makes her, you can't even, she says at one point, like, you can't even get hard for me. In episode three, you know, they, like, Sky comes over for dinner, and, um, after that, you know, she started grabbing his dick, dick. during, during actual dinner. I like how they say it, they say, oh, you were jacking me off during, in front of my parents during dinner. Yeah. And when they were, when she did that, like, you know, she wanted to have sex and everything was going well. And as she was on, you know, as he was doing it, apparently he had gotten soft from, you know, the motion of what he was doing. And, and unfortunately, she, um, Sky left in a hurry on her motorcycle and she got hit and ended up in the hospital. So that, that leads to like. That was a confusion for me. I didn't know if she cut herself or Clay tried to like finger her and, um. He felt like fresh, you know, um, cuts. Cut wounds. Under, down, down in that region. Sorry, it's just hard for me to say that. On episode three. Yeah, so. Jessica's up. Jessica's up to the stand. And this is where Jackie's pissed off moment comes in. Because Jessica, okay. At this point, Jessica had the opportunity to, to stand up for herself and say what Bryce did. And, you know, you know, the culture at Liberty High. And she didn't. I literally screamed at the TV when Ultimately, she Ultimately, she was talking about the, the list. The list that they, that Alex made. The list of who's the hot and not list. And um, another thing I want to bring up in episode one, Alex re and Jess return to school. Because Alex has been out, Jess has been out, because everybody thinks in school that she cheated on Justin with Bryce, because that's the story, but we all know that she got raped by Bryce. And they, Alex and her wind up going back to school. Alex was out of school because he had tried to kill himself, shot himself in the head, and it, he's crippled. Now he's he crippled. He can walk, but he uh, has to walk with a cane. So back to episode three. Why I brought up that because they went to Alex went to Jessica's hearing, and um, when Jessica was gonna bring up who made when they asked her the question who made the list, she looked at Alex, and Alex shook his head yes which means was telling her say my name she said his name found out it was about the list but the one thing i will congratulate jessica on is that she had photos on the board about what you know she had photos of earlier her. that day when she went to school early that day before the trial yeah before the trial she went to school and there were pictures on the blackboard of the classroom and it said who would believe a drunk slut and that was her threat um so Jessica jessica wouldn't wouldn't testify against bryce um and it turned into like a big situation and she actually turned that information over to the court and they admitted it into into evidence and as she well. was pissed she, she was like this is what i'm going through ba 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 showed them pictures. but unfortunately like you know the defense attorney for 
this the school itself they turned it into did you tell anybody no i just took it down so the staff didn't know no so how do you expect them to know something's going on when you're not telling them so they kind of twisted that situation which really pissed me off it made it seem like it was more of jessica's fault so on top of the fact that jessica felt guilty and even um hannah's mom approached her about the tapes like she really wanted to know if jessica was the girl in tape nine about the rape but jessica got so shooken up she just like left and and just like walked away because they were in the bathroom and she just walked out of the bathroom and she's like i can't i can't i can't i walked out so jessica had her chance so that really pissed me off because like she had a moment like i see that if she said that then there would be a whole case against bryce and there'd be a whole situation and you know then jessica's parents would know more or less and she wasn't ready to tell her parents so but yeah one thing that we forgot to mention in uh episode two um clay sees hannah's ghost and they she he they could interact and talk and that's another thing that we didn't bring up and now he could talk to her ghost okay and then towards the end of this in the episode um they want to find justin clay and tony def- decide to go and find justin and clay turned to jessica for some you know help where is he where is he and jessica looked at a postcard and then clay denied it clay snooped real quick and he saw that that's where he was in oakland california and um they found him it said nancy i love you sal so it's just some code it was just a code name and then they looked um tony and clay looked for justin and they found him on the streets Um, That was during episode four, and then Clay decides to start hiding um, Justin in his room, even though his mom obviously is an attorney, so, you know, there's always that, you know, that issue that they're going to have, but, um, you know, Clay, uh, Justin is detoxing at this point, and he, he decides to try to get himself better so he could testify and help jessica through what he allowed happen to her with bryce even though she doesn't really give in to him right away but um in episode four we are on marcus is up on the stand and he is a little fucking asshole like he lied about the whole situation he said he grabbed her hand when we all know she grabbed her leg from Hannah's point and she pushed him if if I grabbed your hand would you push me or would you just like move your hand I mean I would just move my move you know I'd if I grabbed your leg towards your vagina would you I'd be pissed okay then so his testify thing whatever was so wrong that he even threw Bryce's name under the in there saying that she was just trying to talk to me to get the Bryce and then they did a flashback moment where she went to where Hannah went to school the next day after Marcus did that to her and she grabbed him by the dick and she says how, like I bet you won't tell your boys now that you you know that how it feels to be you know grabbed like the way that he grabbed her and she grabbed him by the dick hard and you could tell because he was like Ugh. and that was what Hannah did and see like there's bits and pieces that we don't know to the whole story and he just completely lied because of his dad's a senator or whatever or become trying to become a senator and he got accepted to Harvard and he's scared that he's got and his family Marcus's family is very religious so if they ever found out something like that would happen I think they would have disowned him because they're like even before his trial they did a prayer like they're very religious people and most religious people you know definitely believe in abstinence or you know definitely not just trying to hit on some random girl in that situation so there was definitely disappointment that you know marcus lied but that comes to bite and bite him in the ass later anything before tony um he's on probation so he's um doing some boxing stuff and um for anger management for anger management because he he has really bad anger but props to him because he's gay and it kind of reminds me of me but um he uh you know winds up um his trainer and him wind up you know hooking up oh um, i'm gonna go into episode five um so at this point um there were they've been they've been having issues with tyler in school you know bryce threatened him bryce's friends threatened him um so because of the situation they put tyler in a class for troubled teens where he meets this you know punk rock dude named cyrus and Cyrus's friends accept Tyler for who he is and 
stand up to the jocks for him and you know like Tyler feels really accepted by these people and uh, you know even hangs out with him you know his family Cyrus's family and then he finds out that Cyrus's sister is the one that he really wants you know like the girl that he was really into but he thought Cyrus was dating her for a while but then he finally realized that Cyrus's sister was the one he wanted so they end up having a little fling later on so I think that was cute you know um Tyler definitely found somebody that he was into although again that's another situation we'll get into um but at this point um Alex you know since he is at this point you know he has problems walking you know carrying his stuff Alex and um Alex starts becoming more close with Zach, and Zach is helping, you know, helping him, you know, walk to class, carry his books and stuff, but at the same time, Zach is still friends with Bryce and all of the boys on the, you know, baseball team, and and eventually it comes out, you know, the reason why Zach is cool with all of them is he comes to find out that Zach is lying about why to the Jack friends, and Zach, and Alex feels betrayed from this whole situation because Zach said, oh, my mom is making me, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever reason he had made up and, you know, to the boys. But he pretty much threw Alex under the bus. Then there's another Polaroid that is given to uh, Clay. And this time it's of, I think it's of, of Bryce and his ass, his white ass, fucking raping a girl that's unconscious. And I forgot what the back of that one says, but... You, if you if you watch the show, you'll figure it out. I mean, there's so much shit that happens. There's so much shit. So Marcus lied. Tyler and Cyrus, the kid that he met in the class, they decided to fuck with them. They wrote hypocrite in pink on the back of his car, and then they put like a gym bag right next to his car. And like he was he was looking at the gym bag, and he was curious about it. And he like opened the gym bag, and it just bursted out pink paint all over him and stuff like that he was so upset he went to mr porter and obviously mr porter is involved which is the counselor and mr porter was like he really didn't give a fuck because he knew what marcus did because he was on the tapes and mr porter was one of the ones that heard the tapes so he didn't really care about it um he goes to Bryce and says that he's getting fucked with and that, you know, he saved his ass and shit for court. And he's like, no, you didn't. You put my name. You made me involved now, blah, blah, blah. And Bryce had gotten a subpoena to go to court already, but he kept that shit on the DL. Also, uh, Shuri, that's her name. Shuri, uh, during the five months that, you know, the sh what the show said that it was off, she was in juvie because of what she did to... Um, Jeff Atkins, the kid that died in the car accident that they believed that it was a DUI, but he hadn't been drinking. It was the friends that left the beer bottle because she didn't report the stop sign. She had to go to juvie for, for, for the five months and she became back in the show and she helped Justin detox um, from because he was using heroin and, and and I think he was smoking crack, but you know, whatever. I don't really know about that shit. And so the golf kids and and Tyler start fucking with everybody that that fucking starts lying and shit. And before Jessica went to testify, this is another thing they put a they hung a what was it a sex toy a, a sex toy a blow up doll a blow up doll that said slut with duct tape. And she was hanging from a noose. So yeah, Ryan was on the stand, the poem guy. They didn't really get much out of him. Just that he pretty much lied. Like, he, he said he didn't know anything, and in reality, he knew what the poems were about, and Hannah's mom wanted answers, and t it, wasn't, it wasn't coming out in the poems. She couldn't figure out what they were about, but eventually, Hannah's mom put some more stuff together. It gets, it gets really intense. Like, it, get, it gets super, super intense. In six, uh, who's up for court is Zach. Now, this is a big shocker to me because Zach, he's Asian, but he is a good-looking kid. No homo, for real, for real. We'll go into his testimony and we'll go into other details of the episode. Um, with his testimony, he revealed that over the summer that um, him and Hannah started hanging out more and he 
he was pretty much in love with Hannah and that Hannah, you know, pretty much was a secret from the guys because, you know, they didn't want the guys to start, you know, doing and saying shit about her when, you know, he knew the truth about what happened. Zach's and, always been like that. Though. Um, At the end of the summer, what <laughs> really killed her was that, you know, they were like getting ready to go back to school and t- Zach pretty much... D- threw her under the bus and said, like, I don't want my friends to know about this, et cetera, and et cetera, but... And she lost her virginity to him. Both of them lost their virginity to each other, so it was a big deal to her, and it really broke her heart when he, when she found out, so... Yeah, and then, like, in in season one, you would have... I would have never thought, never thought that they spent the summer together. Clay regrets something... Um, he had a uh, promise. Ha- well, he didn't promise, but Hannah and him were supposed to write letters to each other that summer, and he didn't. So he regrets that because she probably wouldn't have talked to Zach. But she felt like they were really liking each other, and they looked good together. But he didn't want the boys to find out because she had a reputation of a slut. But during this episode, Justin returns back to school. Um, he he show he just he doesn't get back to school. He just shows up at the school because he wants to get Jessica back. And Jessica is not feeling it, and it doesn't turn out well. You know, Jessica doesn't want to talk to him, and Justin has to leave. So um, that was kind of like a sad situation because, you know, Justin came under the idea that Jessica wanted him back, but he had found out that he didn't. So Justin ended up, like, pretty much not wanting to deal with anybody um, at that point. And then Clay starts to investigate where these photos are taken because he realizes that there's similarities in the couch and the situation and all that so he's also but, getting pissed off though that that all these secrets about Hannah are revealing that and he didn't really want to know them he didn't really want to know them but he did something that she didn't want him to do like the ghost of her didn't want him to do but she said he said it's not her choice anymore because she's basically dead he um he released the tapes so like everybody, like for everybody to hear the so whole world anonymously. The whole school knows. Everybody knows about everything at that point. For seven, I have a uh, plays up to the sand. Mm-hmm. They they brought up him and Hannah doing a drug together, which is crazy to me because I thought it was like pot or something. But when we were watching it, they. You know, it was with Jeff Atkins. It was a that, flashback. It was a flashback. It was with Hannah, Clay, and a couple people. And um, Jeff a- Atkins was there, and he was like, you need to talk to Hannah, blah, blah, blah. So they all took a pill. Still trying to figure it out what the fuck the pill was. After they started giggling and shit, Reddy knew it was Molly. And so they all popped Molly, and they brought it up in the trial, which makes him look bad. Well, and essentially makes Hannah look bad at Hannah's poor decision making too. Um, but more threats are coming towards everybody, even people who have already testified. Marcus, when Marcus slid on the stand um, to try to help Bryce, and Bryce was ungrateful, he turned to Bryce because he was being threatened and Bryce pretty much turned him away and Marcus felt pretty much betrayed at that point. Marcus and Bryce had a very, you know, limited relationship. And another thing I want to bring up is uh is about Alex. Um Alex has been taunting everybody well, certain people that he knows might have a hold of the tapes to let him hear the tapes because he when he shot himself he forgot a month before he shot himself because he doesn't understand his suicide note and his suicide note said I could have stopped it I could have stopped it and he just wants to remember what he could have stopped and he thinks that the tapes are going to let him know in the tape and and they do he, now that they're released to the public no his flashbacks did but the tapes did help him but Clay gave him the tapes before he released them to the public that's all I wanted to say about that and then uh and and then after Clay got back from trial they did hang up Jeff Atkins jersey the one that got killed in the car accident that the girl that knocked the stop sign down got five months juvenile for that which I don't think she she should have gotten more than that but anyways oh that's just how it is but I mean five months is a lot in juvie so so on episode eight Justin returns to school and uh Clay goes to see Sky after the day after he released the tapes that night, and then he goes to see Mrs. School to see Sky, which she's in a like a 
a mental health program. And basically, she tells him that she, she's going to start a whole new life. And she'll they always, break up. Yeah. Which is pretty sad. Um, so at this point, um, the parents take the stand. And they talk about a lot that they, you know, things that they didn't even know <clears throat> that Hannah knew. Um, it was revealed when the parents were on the stand that he cheated that Hannah's dad was cheating on her mom and she found out because one day she was at work and she was having you know lunch with Clay and she looked over and she saw him kissing another woman and then it came out in court that you know Hannah knew about that which you know didn't look well on the parents and then the mom didn't know about that so she was completely devastated that Hannah was aware you know she wished she knew that Hannah was aware you know so it would have been a little bit different um um but with that a lot of different things happened throughout this episode too um Jessica saw the third photo which is um reveals more of what Bryce was doing he was having sex with the girl he's currently with Chloe but she was knocked out unconscious so Jessica goes to her and she um, gives um, Chloe the pictures of Bryce. Chloe starts to realize that Jessica's right about the situation, though, and she starts to kind of, like, give in to possibly um, calling Bryce out. Um, so that was a little bit of a win. But on top of it, um, somebody got back at Bryce, which I think is the punk dudes. They put rapist on Bryce's locker during this episode, which I thought was pretty funny because Bryce didn't seem to give a shit, and it made the punk rockers more mad. So, it, like, it was just adding fuel to the fire at that point, which is kind of sad, and it, it just led up to another situation. But at this point, everybody is participating in their recovery of Justin. Um, and unfortunately, at the end of the episode, Justin goes home. Yeah. And then, um... I think um, when it was Clay's turn to uh, say his testimony, that same day was Alex's birthday. And and uh, Alex invited Tyler, and obviously a lot of people don't like Tyler. But um, besides the point, they hang a banner up for him. And Bryce, he said something fucking stupid that he triggered Alex. And Alex said, he yelled, you fucking rapist. And he just kept walking. Um, and Jessica was right next to him. And Zach was right next to him. And Jessica took it personal. And Jessica was like, are you fucking serious? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And um, after a while, Jessica tries to go to, like, to a recovery group. And she winds up meeting a friend named uh, Nina. And uh, to help her out through what she's going through. But Jessica's still in denial. She she knows she got raped, but she just can't know, remember who. Like she knows who. She just says she she doesn't remember. The eight the parents were on uh, to testify, and that's when they found out that, like Jackie said, that the parent that the father was cheating, which is. Which is why, which the mom connected one of the poems about the house burning, that Hannah wrote about her father cheating. So and in nine. The person up for trial is Mr. Porter, the counselor. And the main issue regarding him is the fact that the day that Hannah said that she was going to see her, him, his um, calendar book page was ripped out. So that was a very big question on everybody's mind. Oh, and um, the, you know how you know goes from one event to another? Tyler and Cyrus are fucking with real guns. Like... You know, after doing all that, they got all this adrenaline and um, they they start fucking with real guns and shit. Um, well, and at this point, Bryce's dad tells Bryce to get Chloe pretty much to keep her mouth shut. Um, and Bryce tries to pretty much buy her to shut up and not say anything. Um, and she doesn't. And... Um, she, even though Chloe's not feeling Bryce and is scared of him, she still goes with it, unfortunately, because... I've never been to... I've never like, been yeah. out of the United States. I'm going to have to get a passport. Oh, we'll have that covered for you, hon. That's Bryce and Chloe talking. I, I'm like, this fucking typical... I'm during sorry, Jackie. Episode, yeah, during this episode, Tyler went on a date with Cyrus's sister... 
He jizzed in his pants. And he came in his pants. He pulled a fucking big mouth move. Big mouth with, uh, what's his name? Maurice. No, not Maurice. Andrew. Andrew, when Andrew jizzed in his pants with, uh, the little girl. I don't remember her name. Um, but yeah, that was, that actually got around, so there was problems from that. Um, since he was so embarrassed, he told Cyrus that he didn't want to, like, ruin the friendship between him and and Cyrus because of him dating his sister for covering up his jizz shit. Um, during this episode, Alex wants to remember certain aspects because he's starting to get some of his memory back. Um, By playing the video and game. And he wants to play the video game that he used to play at, at Bryce's little hangout spot. Where it was by like a the penthouse. A like little the- penthouse by the pool. Alex, content, you know, gets, you know, gets that, you know, remembers, remembers why from the tapes and from his suicide note what, what he saw. So that's one thing that, you know, triggered, you know, triggered him. He was very shocked at what he realized about himself and what happened. And because Clay went to go see Sky, the principal pulled him into the office said, oh, why are you absent the day before when the tapes were released? And he winds up getting put into the class where Tyler and Cyrus are in, which is the, I call it the troubled teen class. Um, And then later on in the episode, the jocks wind up jumping Clay in the bathroom. They put a bag over his head, and they're wearing, like, their helmets, and they start kicking the shit out of him. That's because um, they find out that Clay is pretty much hiding Justin at this point. Um, but Justin um, steals from his mom when he's at his that the house, the mom's boyfriend, um, who's a drug dealer. He ends up stealing the, you know, spare, you know, emergency cash. And the mom sees it and, you know, he tries to tell her he needs, you know, she needs to get out. But unfortunately, she's like, I can't. And she did, he, though. And, and, and he gave her some money from the emergency cash to tell her to leave. And she so did. I thought that was a very noble thing for him to do, to give her the option to leave. And she did. Um, but another thing... My, that, my assumption. Yeah, but my... One thing that upset me was that um, Tony, unfortunately, his car gets fucked up during this episode. Um, his boyfriend is there, who is the um, anger management coach, you know, that he does boxing with. Um, so, um, there was a lot of, like, you know, what the hell's going on, and Tony pretty much had to say, I have secrets, and it was a big ordeal, um, but again, mm-hmm. Alex remem- starts to remember from those video games, and... And, um, one thing I want to bring up, they, oh, um, since Ty- um, since Clay got into that class with Cyrus and Tyler. They wind up get him, getting him to do mis- mischief shit. And they um, burned rapists in the football field grass. And they spray painted. They put, they put rapists on the baseball field the day of a big championship game. So, like, they had to do, like, a whole new, you know, new grass and new everything. Oh, they fixed it. They fixed it so no one knew about it. So, also in that episode, um, Mrs. Baker gives Alex a job at the pharmacy. Alright, so in episode 10, um, the girl from Hannah's old school testifies about Hannah and the situation why Hannah had to move schools and all that. Her name was Sarah. Um, so Sarah testified that, you know, Hannah was a bully and, um, it came out from Tony that... She was really just trying to fit in. She really didn't want to be a part of it. And she felt so bad about what she did. And she felt so much remorse for what she did. And Tony actually went up to Sarah's um, hotel room and let her know that. Just so that she would know that, you know, at the end of the day, there was remorse there. And um, they started figuring stuff out about the clubhouse because... At the end of nine, when they did the rapist thing and Clay was there, he saw the the jocks bringing a girl somewhere. So they figured out where the clubhouse was. So in episode ten, they made Sheree, uh, I, I'm fucking up her name so bad. Um, go as a decoy to the clubhouse, and that's when 
you know, they took a Polaroid picture of her. And then during the, the game that night, they were going to go break in to the clubhouse to get to see if they could get any evidence. And um, Alex winds up fi- finding a bullet in his locker, just one bullet. Um, and this episode, Tony testifies. And then, you know, they always got to bring in the probation and, you know, the stupid... And it know, goes to his credibility. You know, like, it's just trying to... F- why did why did Tony have the tapes first and blah, blah, blah. But eventually, Tony tell, gets rid of evidence. You know, he burns it. And he tells Hannah's mom why he, um, he owed her a favor. Because one time... Tony was going on a date with Ryan and somebody called him a faggot and he got up wind up wind up getting out of hand that he wound up whipping this guy's ass and um he ran from the cops and he ran into the movie theaters where Hannah worked and he's like Hannah I need your help blah 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 like I got into a fight and she she hit him right away and you know how Spanish people are favor for a favor um, this episode, the baker shop also gets messed up, um, completely trashed and rummaged through to the point, like, they had to completely restock everything. Um, and Tyler uploads some photos onto Facebook, and it ends up causing problems between him and Cyrus because it shows proof of vandalism on the school property, and because of that, they, um, end the friendship. And um, Cyrus just doesn't really want to have anything to do with Alex or Tyler. But Tyler really, Tyler really felt a good connection between them as a friendship. Um, Alex is threatened again. He gets um, cut out, you know, when you go to a shooting range. He gets one of those shooting range cutouts. And it's four bullets around the head and it's. I don't recall what it said. It's a when it's a target when you go to shooting practice. You it's they sent him one where he got shot in his head, just one bullet in the head, and it said I don't know what it said. Like you, you should don't killed. miss next time or something like that. That's what it said. Don't miss next time. And they also and that like towards the end, I guess when they were in the clubhouse at the end of the episode, they do find the box of the Polaroids, and there's many girls. But um, previous. It comes out that the reason why people would take Polaroids is because there's no, you know, back prints that you can reprint that picture. That printer picture can only be printed once when that Polaroid takes it. So there's no, you know, backwards evidence. It's not like a digital photo in any way. It doesn't have, you know, um, what do you call those? You know, when you go to like the you CBS. know, like the the, the films. Neg- it doesn't have a film. They're called they're called negatives. The negatives. negatives. Yeah, there's no negatives. Nothing. No proof that those pictures were ever taken besides the photos themselves. I took photography in in high school and I suck. But it's facts. I suck at taking pictures. But um, moving on to eleven, Bryce is Bryce is up onto the stand, and this is when they bring Chloe involved and show her the pictures from the clubhouse and just tries to convince Chloe. And she was going to say something, but she didn't. Um, But this was in Bryce's on the stand. So Chloe and the whole family is there during his testimony. She finds out, you know, during Bryce's storytelling, I'm going to say storytelling because he lied about everything he said. It was backwards. What he said was really what Hannah said. What Hannah said was really what he said. So it was kind of some crazy shit. Um, But Chloe thought, like, their special spot over by the bridge was, like, their spot. But she came to find out that Hannah um, had taken them there. And they had gone there quite a few times. And at the end, you know, Bryce said that there were feelings involved. But it was really, you know, he had feelings for her in a way. Basically, everything Bryce was saying that Hannah was saying, it was actually him saying it. Yeah, I said that. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, like like Stephanie said, Jessica tries to talk with Chloe, but it really doesn't go through. Um, but during this episode, Cyrus's sister tells everybody about the date. So after Cyrus's sister tells everybody about the date, um, Tyler gets really, you know, fucked with, and he starts to become an outcast during this episode, and he feels like he doesn't have anybody 
Um, and right after that, uh, there's a huge fight that yeah, breaks out. Yeah, the boys start fighting. That's a the huge. best. All the first it started off with Justin getting into Bryce's face, and like, um, you know, Montgomery, that stupid fucking son of a bitch. He tries like, oh, you want me to take care of this? And he's like, Bryce is like, nah, I got this. So then Justin and him start fighting, and then everybody else. Then Clay starts to to fight, and then. Zach jumps in, and then Tony, and then Justin. Tony jumps in and says, "I'm not trying to like fuck with you. I'm not trying to fight you." And then he says, "You fucking faggot." That's it. Tony went off, and then and then the goth kids like, "Let's fucking go!" So then the goth kids started fucking fighting the jocks, and then um Zach was getting his his ass pretty fucked up by two guys, and well no by Montgomery and um. Alex, Alex comes walks in with, with a his cane. cane and smacks him. Right, m- smacks Montgomery and he knocks out. And then um, Zach helps um, Alex back up and they all get put in the classroom and it's like hilarious. It was like it was like one of the best scenes. Like they, the all the boys getting into fights and then even Mr. Porter and the coach get into a freaking fight. Like he, what do you do? He pushed him by accident. Well, I mean, there was so much going on that uh, Mr. Porter got hit by one of the kids and his arm went back and it ended up hitting the coach and the coach turned around and the other coach and he hit him in the face. So it was just a big deal. <laughs> it, it was, the fight was, the fight was one of my favorite scenes because then that shit was fucking funny. Everybody's like, fuck it. And everybody's just fighting and it was great. So, and, um... Then that night, Alex gets an, another. That's when he gets the gun, gun from M- Montgomery. Like obviously, Montgomery's the one doing this shit. So I, I blew that one out. But he gets the gun, and they figure it out. And then on to twelve is so. During this episode, it goes to a flashback where Justin's childhood was revealed that Bryce was there for him when he was a younger child. Um, you know, Justin would be picked on because he was dirty, he didn't have new things, and Bryce, you know, you could tell he was, you know, clean cut haircut and brand new shirt, brand new this, and um, Bryce stood up for Justin, so Justin, you know, was always grateful to Bryce, but Justin was on trial that day, um, and Justin reveals that he had a thing with Hannah as well so that mm-hmm. turned into a big problem it's like um it's like Zach's mom said wow it's like every day there's a new boy in the paper that she's messed with like it's kind of fucked up but like she, she didn't it's not like that though um, threats are made from Montgomery, um, and then there was a secret spot that they go and hide, um... For graffiti, it was pretty cool looking. It's like this random, like, hideaway spot, and Montgomery comes to, you know, trade places with the other dude, and he comes to find Tony, Zach, Alex, Justin, and Clay. And the reason why the kid is there is because he's poor just like Justin and all he had was a baseball team and because of Tyler and all this shit that's going on, baseball season got canceled. Marcus ran his mouth and said that Bryce was a rapist um, during one of the, like, the sporting ceremony. He got suspended and um, then all this, then all this other shit happened where they Found out my they thought Montgomery had the photos because somebody stole them out of Clay's car and because um, he's stupid enough to put him in his back seat like an idiot because we don't have trunks. But, Mr. Porter gets fired. Yep, that was just about to say that. Um, but during the fight, uh, Montgomery was pretty much yeah. up against everybody, and Alex pulls a gun out, the gun that Montgomery gave him, and then Alex pulls the gun out and says no i want you know they're like where'd you get that and he's like montgomery so montgomery and him go for a ride and at the end of the day montgomery takes the gun from alex and leaves alex stranded without a phone or anything um at this random place in the middle of the desert so but they wind up finding him they end up finding him but it was just like a whole big whole big turnaround from the previous event oh and i want to mention something after um bryce's testimony that night um that during that day tyler was hanging out with clay and they were shooting guns the cops came and clay wound up running and he didn't give the gun back and he had to run with the gun 
and that night he winds up um trying going to Bryce's and calling Justin to um bring his car and Justin had to stop him from um killing Bryce. And then Justin cocks the gun back and says to Bryce, "This we were never here. This never happened." Also, when Bryce um c confessed to his mom about the rape and she slapped him and she said that you're a disgrace to this family. That happened to him. All after Bryce's um testimony. testimony and then Justin's came in. I those are like really key points, you know. I have a lot for thirteen. Thirteen was like the most touching, most sad, it was heartbreaking. I cried. So here is the spoiler alert. Um so at this point, you know, Jessica and Justin agreed to go to the police. Everybody's going to stand by their side. And have everybody from the tapes, besides Bryce, obviously, and have everybody there to support her and have um, a case of rape against Bryce. At the end, I'll tell you, um, Bryce goes against, well, we have to say that. Well, no, like, they, they made the police reports. They did what they had to do. Then after that, Clay goes and he gets his tattoo fixed because in the beginning he was going to get a tattoo, but he passed out. He got, um, what's that symbol called again? A semicolon. He got a semicolon tattoo. And then everybody's just waiting for the verdict now. Then the verdict comes out. Um, there was no justice for Hannah Baker. So pretty much the verdict came in and the school has no, um, they... They ruled that the school has no um, responsibility for Hannah Baker's death. And um, so Bryce goes against Jessica in court, um, and the judge gives well, Bryce... Well, but, but before that, when the verdict was there, the mom spoke to the press. While she was speaking to the press, Bryce got arrested, and so did Justin. So them two got arrested. Now there's a case with Jessica, Bryce, Justin, and then it goes into that. But because Jessica didn't say her piece during the trial for Hannah, it didn't. So, um, essentially, Bryce gets three months probation. Bryce ends up transferring to another school, so... With Chloe. And gets to play sports still. Tyler goes back to school after his, like, nervous breakdown and finds out that Cyrus's sister, the girl, you know, that he really liked. Well, he didn't really have a nervous breakdown. They put him in the pre-trial diversion program. Said he wasn't fit enough to be in school because of the rapist thing that he that he posted the pictures on there. And Cyrus only got suspended. Eventually, they hold a service for Hannah in a church that believes that Hannah will rest in peace. And that the fact that even though she killed herself, God will forgive her. And know that she had pains and struggles that she couldn't bear to live with. And... So, um, at this point, Clay had finished a tattoo, and, um, he sits with Hannah's spirit a while before the service and has a long conversation. Um, so during the service, Hannah's mom spoke, and then Clay spoke. Um, he had the most touching speech about her. It literally made us cry. It was so beautiful. And then, um, at the end of Clay's speech... Um, Hannah was in the, Hannah's spirit was in the back of the, you know, the church and she walks out the doors and the doors are lit with, you know, it's all bright lights, you know, essentially saying that she went to heaven. So I could play it real quick.
good friend once said to me, I can love you and still let you go. So, Hannah? I love you. And I let you go. So, that was like, oh my god, so sad. Um, but Clay, he loved her. Arranges a party at the, you know, coffee shop that, you know, she always went to. Um, and it was a really nice thing that he did. Um, yeah, at the place that, um, the Jess, coffee shop that they always went yeah. to. And, uh, there's one quick thing I want to say. They show a quick peek of Justin's stepdad, like, creeping up on Justin because Justin gets out in this one and he gets to join them at the party and um his stepdad is like creeping watching him because apparently I, that's when I think his mom left but Clay uh, arranged the party and Justin gets some good news so Justin finds out that Clay's parents want to adopt Justin um due to the circumstances um and then you know obviously Justin was touched and he was very honored so he accepted um <laughs> then at this point um he cried yeah Bryce, uh, at this point we you know goes back to the school and Montgomery's pissed and Bryce wants Montgomery to calm down about what Tyler's doing and he's telling him to back off of Tyler um but Montgomery takes things into his own hands fucks him up and Tyler is re completely rejected by Cyrus at this point, so he's all alone. So when, you know, Montgomery saw, saw the chance, he pretty much rapes Tyler with a mop stick. I didn't um, rape him. He's just shoved the shit so far up his ass. He raped him with it. And um, he ended up, it ended up being bloody, and it was just completely disgusting. And he even went home and covered his face with the with a little hat and then he went to the restroom and he put his hand back there and he had blood a lot of blood um so alex and zach are still becoming closer as friends and you know there's no problems between them and then like during like the little coffee house thing um mrs baker goes up to clay and says that H hannah wrote 11 reasons why not to kill, to her kill herself, herself. And one of them said helmet. And her mom's really smart because she figured out that helmet was Clay. So Clay was on there. And then later on in the helmet. list was helmet. So Clay was two reasons why not to kill herself. But she made it into two different people as Clay and helmet. So yeah, man. Justin, um, it shows Justin towards the end still shooting up between his toes at Ugh. Clay's house. So... Justin's still on some shit. Um, the cheerleader burns the photos. So all the photos of all the previous... It seemed as though all the photos of previous girls and women that were unconscious that were um, raped by the jocks were completely disposed of. And then at this point, it it's time for the spring fling, I guess. So spring fling um, and it happens and everyone's there. Um... Like, the whole group, even Tony's boyfriend surprised him to be a part of it. Clay, Jessica, Alex. Everybody. Um, everybody's there. Um, during this spring fling, you know, Jessica goes with Alex and, um, you know, is dancing with him. But, you know, secretly goes to Justin and has sex with him. So, there's that right there. And, and then, then... Then a song gets played and Clay gets... Uh, emotional because this is the song that him and Hannah danced to at the other dance and Tony right away he's like I gotta find Clay and leaves his boyfriend and then everybody goes Ryan um, um, J Justin goes the goth, the goth kids are in the background Jessica they're all hugging and Zach and they're all hugging him and just holding him because he just is crying during this whole part. It was really sad. It was really sad. Alright, so 
Um, Chloe um, goes to Jessica, and Jessica doesn't really want to talk to her, but Chloe's like, you need to listen to me, please, please, Jessica. And she, Chloe confines that she is pregnant. <laughs> Oh, obviously by Bryce. So, Chloe's pregnant, and she doesn't know what to do. Um, and then the series ends with Tyler showing up at the spring fling. He and was strapped up. He tries to shoot up the place, and he pretty much... He has... Um, Every gun you could think of. Sorry. A whole bunch of guns. I got emotional. And, try, and shows up, and... Um, Clay pretty much tells, uh, tells Tony. Justin and everybody, you know, you know, lock down this place, you know. He gets Tony to get his car, gets, convinces Tyler to put the gun down, takes but the that, assault rifle from him. That's being completely pointed at, at Clay for yeah, he a would, solid few minutes, which is a very scary, like. Yeah, scene. come on. An assault rifle to your face. And he's, like, trying to, like, get him to, like, that shit was scary. So, the season ends that... Tony comes, takes Tyler, and gets Clay him out of there. And Clay ends up holding the assault rifle that was been pointed at his face for a solid few minutes. Uh, the show was very deep. It was very touching. It hit the heart. Yeah, I mean, it was really sad. We binge-watched it in one day, and the day that it came out, um... Even just like a few hours after it came out, and watched it in one day. So it's uh it's sad that you know suicide does happen, and unfortunately, you know they do go into another problem that we're starting to face besides suicide, and that is um, school shootings. Um, so they're starting onto another subject. So. I do expect a season three, so I would say there's going to be a season three. I know maybe most people don't think so, but there's other new evidence, and um, there's possibly the, the fact that they can get Jessica to say she was the girl on tape nine. To make you never know. But to make it some missable evidence, I don't know. I don't know. think so. I don't think so. I don't so, know. So, I mean, everybody has their moments agree to disagree, but... I think there's going to be a season three. We'll see. We'll see. Rest in peace, Hannah Baker, even though it's a fake story. It touched It touched me. That's sad. But everybody take care. KRG, we're out. And if you do have problems, reach out. Call. There's people who care. There is. Don't let this happen. This is kind of to show you what not to do because... You're not just hurting yourself, you're hurting everybody around you. So, you know, think about the people who love and care about you that would 